Was all this legal? Absolutely not. We were making more money than we knew what to do with. Well, there it is. <laughs> a, a, a short but interesting clip from the Wolf of Wall Street 721. And we've got the real Wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belford, in the BT studios. Um, joining us straight from Los Angeles. How Thanks. are you? Thank doing you. Doing good. Yeah. A little okay. jet lag, but feeling good. Feel we, thank you for being here. Jordan, we have so many questions for you, but Shoot. I'm sure everyone does. Um, first of all, when you see a clip like that, when you see uh, Leonardo DiCaprio playing you, what are you, I mean, it's been a while since the movie's been out, but how does it yeah. feel for you to see that? Well, it's always a little bit odd, you know, you're watching someone else play you on screen, but Leo did an amazing job, and uh, so, you know, I'm honored, you know, certainly it's better than Danny DeVito playing you on uh, screen. <laughs> oh, poor but, Danny. But I love Danny. Danny. No, I love Danny DeVito, but I think I just, you know, it is what it is. And, uh, yeah. That Leo was, Lee was amazing. And, uh, but it's still weird. Some of the scenes, obviously, are tough to watch because uh, I was slightly out of my mind back in the day. And mm -hmm. I'm sober now for 17 years. So a lot of the, uh, thanks. So, so a lot of the activities there, like, bring back those memories. But listen, parts of it were fun. And parts of it I have lots of regrets about. And, uh, you know, I've, I've taken that story of my life and, and, you know, tried to really build on that to build a much better life, more sustainable life that empowers other people versus that hurts other people. So mm -hmm. so let's go back a little here and talk about that life uh, that, that was yours that you've decided to, to, to lead, really, because I, I saw the movie. I know at the beginning you had a very conservative life. You were married. Uh, and then you met certain people that changed that around. At what point did you decide, okay, uh, this life that I had is not for me. I want to live this life. In excess. In, yeah, ex yeah. in, in lots of excess. I, I, I don't think there was one point where I actually consciously said that because it was more about like, you know, you, when you have a piping hot bathtub and you dip your toe and you pull it out and you're like, oh, it's so hot. And then five minutes later, you're submerged under and it feels normal. Really good, yeah. Right? Because you, you get used to it. And, I, and it wasn't like I so much said, oh, this is the life for me as much as I slowly descended into this life where it seemed normal the whole way through because I had become desensitized to it. There was a moment though when I, when I realized that I, that I that was off the trail completely. Because for the first year and a half in business, I was doing things right. And then it was at a certain point I met someone who showed me a couple of things and part of it was taking a bag of money. And um, he's like, oh, everyone does it on Wall Street. And there was just a rationalization I allowed myself to right. buy into. And that's really what started me down the path. And, and from that point forward, it was just sort of, that was the beginning of the descent. And then business-wise, you went to a certain excess, but I mean, your lifestyle as well went to a whole other excess. And totally. They, and they somehow collided together and created... Yeah. fed on each other. I have to say, like a, a mastermind uh, in, in that business. <laughs> they, you know, listen, I, th I think there, my life represents some of the best things you can do and the worst things you can do wrapped up into one. I think that's why people are intrigued with it, because on one side, yeah, I was young. I didn't have come from a wealthy family, and, and I cracked the code on teaching people how to sell and influence, and I used that to... to make other people successful, but also I then misused it by not having the ethics and integrity. That mm -hmm. went along with it. I was young and wanted instant gratification, so it would all have been great if I would have taken the skills and the drive and the hard work and, and the vision, but made sure that I had the ethics and integrity too. Then I would have no regrets. But my regrets are is that because of the lack of integrity and ethics, people lost money. And um, my goal this year is I'm paying everybody back. So I'm just announced a huge U.S. speaking tour, which I'm going to give 100% of the profits to wow. investors, and hopefully to make the whole thing right this year is my goal this what year. What advice? Yeah, you talk uh, you talk a lot about you know the, there was a lot of drugs, there was a lot of things going on at the time that that was feeding off of you know the success. I mean, they were like you said, they were feeding off each other. But I wonder as things started to become a little bit more illegal and a little bit more illegal, do you, even though all of the drugs are going on, do you say? Okay, just one more time, and it'll be fixed. Is it like a gambler's mentality? Part or? Of it, yeah, it's quite it's fine. No one's really asked me that before. I mean, asked everything, but it actually is a little bit like they're always party. It was like you know, like the, the Godfather. Yeah. In five more years, the calling of him is strictly legitimate. Right. There was a little bit of that going on. We were always yeah. like, I'm going to make this, and then I can do it right. And and but a lot of it's self delusion. And, and in the beginning, it's it's accurate, but then it's all a story you're telling yourself. Uh, and that's really, you know, one of the things I teach people today in, in matters of success is the story you tell yourself typically will stop you from succeeding and getting where you want to go. Because as long as you're buying into your own line of BS, so to speak, right. you're not going to get honest, you're not going to make the changes you got to make, and you keep going down the path you're going down. Yeah, and we look at, I mean, your story is, is on, on film right now. Uh, well, you look at the Bernie Madoffs of the world, and you look at, we have Earl Jones here. Yeah. Um, I, your story, looking at it like this, is almost glamour. Like it, it, it's glamour. It's glamorous because it's Hollywood. Yeah. So, what were you worried about in this? Were you worried that people might get the wrong impression? I mean, what? There has been some backlash here. 
It, listen, I, you know, some of the things are glam, glamorous because they're glamorous. Like they are in real life, it's sort of glamorous. Fast cars, beautiful women, lots of money, right? So that's glamorous. That being said, though, I think that when you go to see this movie, at least I thought one of the good things were that you got to see me take the fall. Right. In the movie Wall Street with Gordon Gecko, you didn't see him take the right. fall till. 25 years later, they made yeah. a remake, which was terrible, unfortunately. <laughs> but, but you didn't get to see Gordon Gecko get his comeuppance. And because of that, people like myself at the age of 22 went down to Wall Street thinking that was, hey, that was the way. That was it. At least with The Wolf of Wall Street, yes, there's parts of that fun and the glamorous, because they were. And Marty Scorsese, one of the things of his gifts as a director, is he doesn't moralize. He's saying, he shows you something, says, this make your story. own decision. I'm not going to tell you what to think. You judge for yourself. Well, some movies try to almost feed the judgment to you, and I, to me, I don't like that. So the idea is if, you, if you're a healthy human being right. and you have at least any morals, you're going to go to that movie and say, you know what? There's things this guy did that are amazing, and there's things that were terrible. I want to try to maybe model some of the great things, but I certainly don't want to use any of those skills or the drive to hurt other people. So I think people hopefully are smart enough to see the fall and what happened, then the resurrection, and they can then Google me and find out, you know what, look what the guy's doing now, and he's not ripping people off. He's, mm -hmm. he's making good on it. Well, now, uh, you turned your life around. You're a motivational speaker. That's why you're here in Montreal speaking this afternoon at Palais des Congrès. Yeah. Um, and I, I, over the break, uh, I asked you about this. Do you, are you happy with your life right now since things are, are way different? I guess a bit less grammar, less money. You have a lot of money to pay back. You're, are you happy with where you are now? I've never been happier. I mean, in terms of the, uh, the glamour, it's actually, for me, the movie's made it more glamorous than it ever was in a different way, in a, in a healthier way. In other words, in a way that I, I can sort of spread a message around that I believe in. Um, and in terms of the money, listen, I mean, I'm fortunate because I do very well and I'm able to live a great life and pay back money at the same time. And to me, that was really what my goal always was, was to make it right and not to make it so that my life becomes a misery. So I you think weren't that, penniless, yeah. Well, well, in other words, I couldn't motivate myself unless I was living, I you know certain things that I need in my life. And I think the idea is to, is, to, is to balance it out so everyone gets paid back and I'm living well at the same time. And thankfully, this movie has really changed things. So, by the way, my website is for today's event, yes. Wolf of, Wolf of Wall Street. CA. Um, so can get oh, and it's going to be linked onto oh, our, cool. our site as well. And I had to plug it, you know? Yeah, no, that's totally fine. I do have one quick question, though. Sure. Uh, you were the wolf. I was. Are you the lamb or are you <laughs> the owl now? What, the owl is wise. The lamb gets eaten by the wolf. Yeah. Which are you now? So you're not the lamb. <laughs> I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm like the gene splice of the owl and the wolf. Listen, the wolf had some really amazing qualities, and the wolf had some terrible qualities. I think every human being, you know, we're complex. I think everyone has a dark side. Every, you, you, everyone does. And I think what I did is I let the beast out of the cage. And I think the beast actually serves a really good purpose in everybody, that sort of that drive, that, 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 that desire that of, of wanting and getting. But it needs to be tempered as part of a much lighter side that's benevolent, that gives. So I think that what I've learned to find in my own psychology is a balance, that I still have the drive, I still want to succeed, I still want to, to create stuff and, and live a life that's going to make me feel great. But I'll never do it at the expense of another human being. I want to lift people up as I'm elevating myself. And I think that's the mistake. It's the mistake I made. I was young. I was stupid as much, as smart as I was, is as stupid as I was. You were I, hungry like the wolf. <laughs> yeah, too hungry like bingo. Hungry yeah. like the wolf. Jordan know? Valford, thank you so much for coming. And good luck uh, with this Canadian tour. Good luck with the U.S. tour. Lots of money to pay back, but your objective. I, you I know you're well driven, so uh, good luck it. with that. All right, Jordan, thank you so much for stopping by. We'll take a short break, guys. We'll be right back here on Breakfast Television on City.